you know, in the time I've been making YouTube videos, things have moved on quite a bit. They've changed, uh, taste change. I'm not surprised. I mean, it's been a long time since I started. There are people who are 16 years old who could be watching this, who weren't even born when I uploaded my first YouTube video. Then again, they're probably not watching this because people don't want to watch an old bloke talk about defunct technology that's of no relevance to them. They'd rather watch a TikTok or a YouTube short or something. I understand that. I mean, times move on, taste change. But uh, I thought maybe I should try and keep up with the modern age, make a video that's more in keeping with what people want to watch nowadays. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the RKTX T1. This is a cable that was used by a handful of people in the late 1990s to attach a CD portable up to a mini disc recorder to copy across the CD text. There you go. See, who says I can't move with the times? And while we're looking at this, we'll also have a bit of a chat about CD text. So let's get on with it. Okay, so here's what all the excitement's about. It's the Sony RKTX-T1. It's this cable here, and it's for the purpose of that. Joint text. You might have seen that logo in an old instruction manual for a CD portable or a mini disc recorder. And this cable connects those two things together. And talk about niche use. There's very few people I'd imagine that would have been able to use this at the time. Let's just get it out of here, and I'll explain a bit more. OK, so if you look at the cable, you can see we've got a mini jack on either end and the connector which would go into the remote socket on the CD player and the mini disc recorder. It's the same socket that's used for these inline remote controls. However, there is a bit of a difference. This end is standard. This one, the one that goes into the mini disc end, has additional pins on there that stick up from the top. And that means it won't fit in any mini disc recorder. It has to be certain ones. It just so happens that I bought one just for this video that has the appropriate socket. So if you look on the side here, you can see there's two little cutouts above the socket there, which you don't get on a normal mini disc recorder, which enable this cable to fit in there. So this won't fit in most mini disc devices. It's only a certain number of them, a very small selection from the late 1990s. And these are the days before NetMD as well. And I think before MDLP. So very limited window. I've also got the CD player here and this end is just normal. It just plugs into there. However, the CD player itself has to be a specific one. Very few CD players are compatible with this cable. You'd think it'd have to be one that displayed CD text because that's what we're copying down through here. But this CD player does not display CD text. There's no way of seeing it on the remote or on the screen here. It doesn't even mention it on the logo. However, it is compatible with this cable here, so it can transfer the CD text across to the mini disc recorder. But that's not the end of it, because then, of course, we need a CD with CD text on it. And it just so happens I have one here. I know this has CD text, so I'll use this. Oh, by the way, if you're having a drink every time I say CD text in this video, you'll uh, need to ring for an ambulance at some point. But we'll put the CD in there. And of course, we need a blank mini disc here. So we've only got one connection there so far. That's not enough. That's just the one that's going to transfer the text across. We'll plug the optical cable from the output there into the input over here. So that's going to get us a digital copy across now. So basically, we're copying a CD to a mini disc, but we're also copying across the track information. Now, whilst I do have a few CDs with CD text on now, You've got to remember, this is a late 1990s product and CD text was incredibly scarce back then. I mean, it's really scarce now, but the chance of you having a CD with CD text on it was very slim. Yeah, I suppose you could burn your own CDs, but it was still quite early days for that. And why would you burn a CD with text on it and then copy it across to a mini disc? You might as well just play the CD, I would have thought. But, you know, maybe some people were doing that. Right, now, I hope you can see the displays here. Let's just wake both of these things up. And once it's read the... CD in here. There we are, 16 tracks, 68 minutes, 45 seconds. Let's just stop that there. And this is showing blank disc on the display there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to press record over here now. And it's showing digital on the screen, sync recording, no signal being received. So as soon as I press play over here, that should wake this one up. And then we're going to start copying across. So let's just wait for this display to show. Yeah, CD text it shows at the top there. And that's the track name coming across already. So it's already read the track name for the first track and it's copying it across at the same time the track's getting copied over. Of course, all real time. So this CD is going to take me 68 minutes to copy across to here. 
But once it's done, it's complete then at that point. There's no need to go into any kind of editing package or use the jog wheel on here to enter the text. It all gets copied across automatically. An incredibly rare setup this to have the cable and the appropriate devices at either end. I can't think there are more than a handful of people that ever went to this trouble. But anyway, it seems to be working at the moment. So let's go back to talking about CD text. It only was added to the CD Red Book standard in 1996. That's 14 years after the first CD commercial releases came out and only four years before CD sales peaked and then started to decline. Initially, there were two different competing standards of CD text developed. There was one from Philips and another from Sony. It was the Sony standard which was the one that was ultimately adopted for the commercial title releases, the discs you'd find in stores. And if a disc has embedded text on it, that logo there should appear somewhere on the disc itself. And also if a player is capable of displaying the text, that logo should be on the player. Not always the case, unfortunately. And as time went on, the logo seemed to disappear even on discs that contain text. Um, having it on the disc itself isn't much use when you look at the packaging and it's not printed on there anywhere. So it's all a little bit vague as to whether or not your disc contains CD text or your player is capable of displaying it until you try it out. Okay, so we're still ticking along just fine here. Everything's still recording across. You can see we've just got onto another track now and the track titles are coming across there. While you're doing a recording, you might want to be listening to what it is you're recording. Now, we haven't got any output sockets left on the CD side. We've used both of those up. But on the mini disc side, they've given us a pass through on this cable here. Now it's worth noting that while we've got a mini jack socket on there, that slot next to it, the one that you'd put your inline remote into like this, that is just a plastic hole. There are no metal pins in there. It doesn't connect to anything. So when I plug this in here, like so, it's just the mini jack part that's forming a connection. And that's just so you can plug that in while keeping your inline remote control attached. And then if I just plug this into the speakers, you can hear the music that's coming through but I can't adjust the volume I can't do anything on here at all all the buttons are dead because the part that connects up with this is dead so really you could just plug this in instead I'll just unplug it that carefully so I don't jiggle anything but yeah you could just plug that into the socket on here like that CD text could contain up to around 15 kilobytes of information and it would typically contain the album title, the artist name, as well as the track titles. There were a number of contributing factors which served to make the setup that you're looking at now particularly uncommon. The first one is having to use a specific machine at either end of the cable for this process to work. The second is having to have a CD with CD text on it. And the third is that Sony lost interest in the cable pretty quickly, stopped supporting it on future machines, no doubt because NetMD then turned up on the scene. And with a NetMD machine, you just rip your CD to your computer. If it didn't have text on it, it could populate that information from the Grace Note database, and then you could copy that across to your mini disc recorder at greater than real time speed. So yeah, this whole setup was made obsolete pretty quickly. It's getting on for 27 years now since CD text was added into the CD standard. And yet now, if you go into a store and were to get a new CD release, if you could find one, then the chance of it having CD text on there would still be very slim. That is unless that CD came from Sony Music. And over the years, I've seen people speculate as to why that is the case, why CD text wasn't more widely adopted. And one of the things I've seen repeated quite a bit is people saying that Sony charged a fee for using CD text. I don't think there's any truth in that. I haven't found any evidence to back that up at all. Although there was a bit of a hassle in using CD text. I think that's what put people off. You'd have to apply for a license from Sony to use it. Whether there was any cost associated with that license, I don't know, but it wasn't a, a fee per disc that you produced. But still, if you had to pay to get a license or you had to apply for a license, then maybe you had to get special equipment in to do it. It's just more hassle than it's worth to most of these companies. After all, you're not going to get any more sales by having CD text on your CD. I mean, it doesn't even mention it on the outside of the box anyway, so nobody knows it's on there. So they probably thought it was just more trouble than it was worth. 
And also don't forget to take into account the petty rivalries that exist between these various different music labels. They've got issues between them that go back sometimes up to a century. So for example, Universal aren't going to want to license a technology that Sony came out with just because Sony came out with it any more than EMI would want something that Warner's came out with. They're all like big kids really. So as it is, if Universal come out with a CD now, it won't have CD text on it, and it doesn't matter about the licenses anymore because those expired years ago. You don't even have to apply for a license anymore for pretty much any CD technology as far as I'm aware of. But they're not going to start upgrading their pressing plants now with the ability to add in CD text after all these years when the sales are dwindling. They're not going to invest in them. The place where you're most likely to find CD text now would be on an independent artist's a disc if they specify that they want it and they go to a small pressing plant they're more likely to be able to add that in there for them and in fact i looked through the last 20 or so cds that i bought and excluding the independent artist ones the ones from the major labels well it was only four out of those 20 that had cd text on them and when i flipped over the disc and had a look at the back they were all sony titles right so that's it we've got our copy let's just go through the tracks on here check they're all in place yeah every track name's coming up so jobs are good and let's just plug in the headphones press play there we go so a digital compact disc to mini disc copy complete with titles courtesy of the rk txt1 now i don't have any other players that this wire can fit into however this end is just a standard remote end that should fit in any CD portable from Sony, or at least the ones with this kind of socket. So let's just pop that in there. We'll stick the same disc in again and see if it automatically copies the information across. Right, well that is interesting. We're only getting the track numbers showing this time. It's not pulling the CD text through from this particular machine, and that will be because this machine isn't compatible with this lead. Despite the fact it is capable of reading CD text and normally displaying it on its remote control, so it can send it out over that socket. However, it's not compatible with this lead and therefore it won't send it to this mini disc recorder. And that shows you that this lead is only really compatible with a very small number of mini disc recorders and CD players. Now it's quite possible that despite the fact you never had an appropriate piece of equipment in your house that could display CD text and you never even bought a CD that contained it, you still have seen it in action. You see in your hi-fi the most likely thing that would show CD text would be an SACD player and not too many people bought into that. However, a lot more people have burnt CDs on their home computers from the files that they've got on there so that they can then listen to that CD in the car. I'm not talking about burning a compilation of MP3s here using the ID3 tag, but burning it as an audio CD, but you can add CD text onto there using the file names as the track names. And then when you put that CD in your car stereo's head unit, if it had an alphanumeric display, which a lot of them did so that it could show the radio station names when you play a CD on them, the track names appear on that display. And over time, as the head units then morphed into more of these multimedia displays with the larger screens, quite often that track title information would also show on those. So yeah, you've probably seen CD text in action in your car, if nowhere else. I do still like it though, when I pop a CD into a home player and the track titles show up, it's a pleasant little surprise, a value added extra, but unfortunately one that's still relatively uncommon. But then again, if you want CD text nowadays, it's very hard to find a machine that's capable of doing it, or at least the information about whether the machine could do it. You can see on a machine that just has a simple numeric display, that's never going to show CD text. But when you get into some of the ones that clearly are capable of showing text, you still have difficulty finding out the information that you need as to whether or not, if you put a CD with CD text on there, is it going to show up on the display? Take this Marantz, for example. Looking at the specs here, I can't find any information about it. However, looking at that display, it's clearly capable of showing text. So I'll move on to a review of it. And it does show here that it will play MP3s so it seems likely the machine is going to show the ID3 tags for those. But again, there's not a single mention of CD text, whether yay or nay. We'll have to move on to the manufacturer's website. And it turns out that there in the specs, it shows, yes, it will display ID3 tags from MP3s, but it doesn't display CD text. 
But ultimately, I'm aware that none of this matters. It's just an old bloke going on about old defunct tech that nobody cares about. In fact, there was a chap recently got in touch and he told me that I took too long to get to the point. Well, the joke's on him because I wasn't aware that there was a point. Most of the videos that I make don't really have a point. I suppose if there is a point, it's just to waste a bit of time to take your mind off whatever else is going on. It's a bit like getting on a, a merry-go-round and expecting it to take you somewhere. No, it's not for that. It's just to pass a bit of time. If you want points, well, go and watch darts or mess around with an old car engine, but you're not going to find points here or maybe a railway as well. There's plenty of other points in there, but they're not in this video. So all that I'll say now is it's time to stop this merry-go-round. Please take care while getting off, take all your belongings with you, but that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.